Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Technology Update where this month we're taking a ticket to ride and hoping to find ourselves not in a happy hippie hugger tree way though but rather using Russia's latest satellite navigation system. Plans for the system that would eventually evolve into the GLONASS-1 that operates today date back to the Cold War and the heightened tensions surrounding the Cuban Missile Crisis. Both Russia and America recognize the need for sophisticated methods of determining the global position of their air and sea fleets, particularly for their submarines, which are unable to use conventional navigation based on visual referencing. The idea of a global positioning system based in space had been mooted since Sputnik became the world's first man-made satellite. But with military tensions growing increasingly fraught, the time had come to turn that idea into a reality, and the first attempts to make it happen were launched. The system had a few satellites, and it took them a long time to appear in a range that the user could detect, so it did not have global coverage. The second major disadvantage was the length, the length of each positioning session. This meant that the ship had to keep taking measurements for between 5 and 15 minutes non-stop in order to figure out its location. And the third disadvantage is that there was a need for much more precision in order to perform tasks like landing a plane. As early as 1976 it was proved that it was possible to create a system that would not have any of these disadvantages. That system was the mid-orbit global navigation satellite system. The GLONASS network orbits 19,100 kilometers above the Earth. By 1988, the first six satellites had been successfully launched, and by 1991, there were 12, and the test period was over. Four years later, with 24 satellites, GLONASS was globally effective and was reborn in 2001 when it was relaunched as a standalone project with expanded funding. This enabled a new generation of ultra-modern GLONASS-M satellites to be commissioned. Today there are 20 on the network, of which 18 are currently operational. This means around 95% of the world has crystal clear coverage. And by 2011, with 30 in orbit, wherever you are on the planet, you should be able to find yourself whatever you're doing. Further plans are also in place for a new generation of GLONASS-K satellite, which will slowly be phased in as the existing ones die. The control systems for the whole operation are located within the Russian Federation, with the central hub for the whole network in space and on Earth run from Moscow. GLONASS and GPS started out their lives fighting on different sides in a cold war. But these days they are often to be found doing battle together, scrapping for corporate dollars in the global marketplace. And in the building industry, they're proving to be quite a team. Until recently, little had essentially changed in the way sites were prepared for major construction since earth movers were invented. Detailed plans taking many man hours had to be prepared weeks in advance, and base levels for the sites had to be pegged out, and the backup required made building sites congested places, where machines took many attempts to level things out. Compare that to a building site of today. Fewer machines working faster with a fraction of the staff normally required. The whole operation run and managed using combined GLONASS GPS receivers taking the place of all the plans, pegs and fuss. Each machine receiving a specific instruction and levelling surfaces automatically in a single pass. Every driver has his own sat-nav unit linked to a portable base unit that's sending a detailed work order to special smart receivers that can be monitored remotely from the manager's office. Inside of smart uh, receiver we have uh, two antenna. One is a uh, GLONASS antenna on top and uh, 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 second one is a GPS antenna, uh, antenna on the bottom. Having a GLONASS integrated antenna inside of the smart antenna receivers, we can uh, work in hard uh, conditions. 
When we walk uh, near to the trees, uh, to the buildings or high walls, uh, we can get uh, the more satellites uh, signals processing. In the future, we expect that the, this technology will be used uh, in uh, more construction sites all over the country. And God forbid anyone should ever put me in charge of a building site, but if they did, I would be delighted to have a piece of kit like this. Because using information from GLONASS and GPS, this software is able to create ultra-precise images of landscapes, not only as they appear, but as the architects would like them to look. These can then be imported into the earth movers themselves, enabling them to automatically create them to centimeter precision. Good news if you're a building manager because it drives costs and timescales way down. But if you're a highly skilled driver, not so good for you because your job isn't as skilled or as highly paid as it used to be. Combined GLONASS and GPS control systems are spreading across the globe. In Australia, for example, GPS alone has limited coverage, but by adding GLONASS into the mix, the market share for satellite systems has begun to steadily rise. They make even tricky jobs faster and cheaper. Working to centimetre precision provides massive savings on concrete and tarmac, and projects can be completed in a fraction of the time. Manufacturers claim each system pays for itself within a month. By pooling their resources, the world's major sat-nav systems are achieving mutual benefits while providing a better service for the world at large. Now the European Union is working on the Galileo system, which should come into operation in 2013. While China is creating the Compass system, which will become operational even earlier. I'm pretty sure that in this field, even though new players are emerging, the GPS and GLONASS will always be the pioneers. Neither the EU or China will be able to catch up with us because these global navigation satellite systems are made up of far more than just the satellites themselves. They also require immense technical facilities on the ground. It takes much more to create an effective system than simply launching some spacecraft. The first satellite systems were all about countries trying to further their own influence in space. But more and more, man's explorations and use of technology like GLONASS positioning systems is an international collaboration benefiting the whole world. Looking at the Earth from here, the borders disappear and we all live together on one planet. So as you can see, uses for satellite systems like GLONASS and GPS have grown far beyond anything the men who dreamed them up back in the 60s could ever have imagined. That's all for this time. If you'd like to know more about something you've seen on the show or have ideas for stories you'd like us to feature in future programs, get in touch via the website. But